list. We have announcement courtesy of Resident Advisor. Warehouse Project reveals first shows for 2021. Woohoo, woohoo, woohoo. Woohoo, first of all, but some of the names you might be a little bit like, oh man, they booked the tech, the business techno alumni, which I'm quite confused about considering how Sasha Lord is always on Twitter talking about, you know, fighting a good fight in terms of hospitality, in terms of getting the clubs reopened again. It's a bit disappointing to see the people in the lineup, but hey, you know what it is, isn't it? Business is business, I guess. And to be honest, you're not really expecting forward thinking, envelope pushing genre bending lineups from warehouse project right they do what they do very well but it's not the place that you'll go to see like what's next up and what's on the underground it's a fairly commercial venue so it probably makes sense some of the people that they've got on there but some people on techno twitter were not happy it says here um six dates have been announced it couldn't the opening night it says um manchester clubbing giant warehouse project is gearing up for 2021 season the promoters put the show scheduled for the deep up mayfield from september 17th until new year's day 2022 there are only six have been announced today may 25 these include now rogers from shake da, 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 da. so let's actually see what the lineup is saying on the website that's the most important thing here view warehouse reopening let's view the calendar ba -ba 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 -ba. let's see who they got on there i'm assuming the tickets are going to sell out super fast i actually want to go just to see what it's like as a venue because it looks so amazing visually from the pictures and stuff it's so sparse and you know grandiose and all over the top right over sorry over the top and the ceilings are super high and the lighting and all the smoke and stuff i really want to go man i think it's going to be a vibe i wouldn't mind checking it out so this is a warehouse project 2021 calendar it's got friday the 17th of september lineup here with now rogers and chic at the deeper you got now rogers chic I'm assuming are they going to do a live performance? Are they going to DJ? I'm not too sure. I, I, I wonder if now Rogers ends up being like um, Joe Goddard from Hot Chip. He just kept he just keeps getting booked on slot on DJ lineups for just because for the legacy they left behind, not because of anything recent they've done, right? Just kind of being grandfathered in that way. Um, they've got Horsemeat Disco, House Gospel Choir, Craig Charles, Gina Breeze, Supernatural at the Concourse. They've got Norman J M B E, uh, DJ Paulette, Verba, and Joe Moosh Motion. That's definitely an oldies um lineup, isn't it? If you're born within. If you're born between 1950 and 1980, you're definitely going to have a good time. Oh, not even that, 1940 and 1970. You're going to have a whale of a time there. Saturday the 18th, they've got DJ Shadow, Floating Points, uh, Jordan Rakai, Soul to Soul, Lauren Garnier, DJ Coz, George Fitzgerald, Jada G, Ben Charles Peterson, Kamal Williams, Moses Boyd. Ben UFO, Moody Man, Virgil Abloh. Oh, Virgil's playing on a Saturday. Interesting. See what that's going to be like. Um, DJ Seinfeld, Channel Trays. That's awesome. He's been doing some good stuff, good remixes. Got a little album, I think, out at the moment. Got a track out with Tyler the Creator, which is really cool. Jam Supernova, Zed Bias. Zed Bias is still getting booked in places. Mamma mia. Josie Rebel, Cool Super, Antool, Sassy J. And Shaiwan John K. Yeah, fairly decent lineup, right? Uh, Alita. Where's all the business tech people that people get upset about? I can't see them. Where are they? Um, September 24th. Andy C. Wilkinson. The Concierge. You've got Goddard versus Alchemist. Hype versus Randall. Kaz Disruptor. Uh, Archive. Okay, it's got here. DJ Rush. Oh, there we go. These are all the, the heavyweights, isn't it? Carl Cox, obviously not a business techno dude, but still on that, you know, adjacent, Peggy Goo. People aren't going to be happy about that. Daniel Avery and DJ High, Jasper James, Brahm and Ham, India Jordan, who I just played a bit of the EP of before, Chris Go, Greg Lord, Concerts, you've got Bless Madonna, Honey Dijon, Honey, KLC BD, Dan Shake, Buddy Zero, um, Scream. I don't see any of the business techno. I see one person who played the Playgrave, maybe. Um, uh, who is it peggy goo allegedly right maybe that's the only person i see on there i don't see what people are complaining about really what else we got here go down eric pride afrobats christoph frankie wow maybe these people might have been playing there and then on so october oh yeah then this is the okay this is the alumni of the business second a lot saturday 2nd of october jamie jones joseph caprietti michael bibby um joey daniel ben sterling pirate copy alisa concert you got martinez brothers seth trucks like Chandler, cassie Jaden thompson fuero shaw 
And then uh, Archive, you've got Archie Hamilton, East End Dubs, Roscoe, Jesse Caluso, Amanda Moore, Lubo and Pash. So maybe that's what people are angry about. But I don't know what people want them to do. Like, what? so are the clubs meant to punish people for playing? Like, I know ethically and morally, it wasn't great to see these people playing. Like I said before, it's just, it's the... Um, the entitlement is just insane, right? That those DJs thought that they needed to have a salary more than anybody else. So they all went out and played at these places, right? Throughout the entire pandemic, they didn't miss one gig. As per Certain DJs have been on tour for flipping ages. We were at Zanzibar, Miami, you know, places in the Caribbean. It's just been flipping insane how they've just been kind of everywhere but home. But what can the clubs do? Like, I don't know. Like, is it a scene thing? Is it a magazine thing? Like, what can actually be done? If they are basically allowed to go because you can't ban people, I guess they, they were able to escape under maybe certain false premises, who knows, or, pre, or, or pretenses, sorry. And then they were able to go to countries and sort of bend the rules and kind of, you know, um, you know, take advantage of the lax kind of governmental protocols in place. And I don't know what you can do, like effectively to punish people like that, quote unquote. And also like, what are we going to do? Are we going to, take them out into the public square and try and flog them what and, and beat them over the head with their flipping cdjs i don't know what you want them to do i really don't it's a hard one isn't it because i get it if you're a dj coming up and you are you know abiding by the rules and you're seeing somebody that was bending the rules to their advantage all throughout the pandemic still getting paid while you were struggling with universal credit and then you're seeing these guys getting booked to these venues it's going to be a bit upsetting but again this is warehouse project isn't it it's not I don't know. It's not about blank. Do you know what I mean? Like, what do you, like, I, I don't know. What did you expect was going to happen? They were definitely going to be these people because they all sell tickets. Like, for sure, these events are going to, like, that event there that I just posted up on here, right? That event on the corner, this one I just read on Saturday, the 2nd of October. This event is going to sell out like, like a hotcake. This one. Look at that lineup. That's basically a quintessential warehouse project, tech house scene. That's basically a tech I've seen Avengers, isn't it? There's no way this is not going to sell out. So I get it, innit? If the if you're that's the thing. If you're number one prerequisite when you have these sort of spaces like warehouse projects is to make sure that they're financially viable and they're able to make a profit or break even, and these people do facilitate you to do so, then it is what it is. I don't think their their position in the culture isn't maybe to be a testing ground and a platform for people to learn the craft and to gain a new audience. That's sort of like the big leagues, isn't it? This is kind of like, it's bad to say because it sounds really odd, but it's sort of effectively like our version of the Champions League, you know, or the, I mean, FA Cup final. This is where you go when you've kind of done the work and you show and prove that you're the best. You kind of go and play here. When you're able to kind of, because usually the best pertains to money generated in terms of tickets. So that, like, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. But hey, what can you do? What can you 